NASA has confirmed. Fragments of the satellite have been found in the Middle East. Go, boys! Sighted the last herd. We will fight those who oppose peace in this world, human or otherwise. Ideally, I would love to start working the moment the script is being developed. But in reality, it's often at the end of the editing process. So that means once the, pic the picture is edited, you're brought in and you, t you discuss the sound design. The usual rule, I would say, is that the earlier is the better because it's not only about the hands-on work that you do while you're mixing, while you're doing the sound design, um, selecting sounds, uh, recording sounds, all that. But it's a lot about ideas and concepts and um, about communication about those ideas. So the more time you have to talk to the director and all the other people who are involved, uh, the better for the end result for the movie. Right from the beginning, we worked very closely with the composer, Neil Davidge. He came over just uh, as we started sound designing and the picture edit was finished. And it became apparent that, especially for some of the monster scenes, it was important how we divided the frequency range because for some monster scenes I would have monsters approach from afar with these deep low monster footsteps which was generally boom boom if he would have covered that range with I don't know some double basses or electronic deep frequencies that it would have conflicted with my sounds Neil provided us with a lot of separated stems for the main mix uh, so we didn't have all the individual elements of the music, uh, but we had a uh, huge, um, huge amount of separation. So we were able to uh, place all the individual elements in the room, um, on the ceiling and in the back to create that huge, massive sound for the score that I think was exactly what we needed for Monster Star Continent. How does a monster bigger than anything we've ever seen sound? What's, what's the vocal cords? You, these are sort of elements you think about. How many legs do they have? What, what, are they slimy? Are they dry? How do they produce sounds? And then you start listening to lots of sounds and experimenting. For the Goliath monster, um, a bird from New Zealand that Lars recorded, a tui, became one of the signature sounds. And if you pitch that down a lot and bring it down a lot, it had it had a certain ooh, sort of, and that became a signature for our Goliath, our big monster, when they were afar. And you could always know, oh, they're there somewhere, they're out there. That's sort of how the herds call each other. That was just a, a happy accident. What really makes those those monster vocalizations alive is. Like Christian said, the, the combination of different elements to, to form into something that we as humans would recognize as a monster language. Some of the sounds that were really important by re recording was uh, an old ketchup bottle that I found in the studio where I could, they would just, for that slobbering and slimy stuff, played a huge part and I did lots of experiments and uh, it was very unfortunate when it was empty finally. So there was lots of recordings coming from that. I bring all these sounds, all these elements I dream to be to become one, one monster to the mixing table or to my cook. So here are my spices, here are the ingredients. Cook, a, cook us a nice monster stew, please. And that's where the mixing comes in. You say, oh, just a little more slime here, a little more grunt here, and or some of the dirt of the feet, and then it's alive. I got movement. To create the stress in the gunfight scene, which is a 13-minute scene where, you have, where our heroes are virtually permanently under attack because they are being shot at, um, I had to decide how do I do the, all the gunshot placement. And um, although we wanted that realistic feeling of they are being shot at, and sometimes in the camera, the editing goes quite a bit in perspective. You have the camera on the left, on the right, everything. Um, at the same time, we wanted um, I wanted that feeling of stress and one of the experiments that turned out good was if we have all the all the opponents shooting at our uh, our soldiers come from the back most of the shots or 90 percent 
And although, although on a logical level it didn't make sense, it gave you that feeling of unease and, and, and uh, nervousness because you, you always have the feeling of there's something, there's something and I, you, don't, you feel uncomfortable. That worked very well because of Dolby Atmos because we could have the, um, a, someone shouting from the site uh, without it being um, sounding unnatural, which would be the case in, in 5.1 or 7.1. The, the tool given to us with Dolby Atmos is the spatial enhancement, because now the space is not only limited to a rather diffuse rear, but very, uh, very precise, very precise uh, pos positions all over, all over the cinema, even coming from the top. It just gives you a lot more dynamic range. You can place the audience in the action. I think that gives you a lot more emotional dynamics as well. You can go from a mono channel, the thoughts, just thoughts uttered from the, from the main character to everything at the same time. You can have monsters attack from above. You have a gunfight where snipers are sitting at precise points in the cinema and you hear the gunshots uh, whizzing by. So all this helped immensely conveying the reality of a world where monsters live.